I'm gonna break into your heart. Well, one person has broke into my heart is Iggy Pop with his new album Post Pop Depression. Hello, my name's Rory Bentley. How are you this fine Sunday morning? Head of a big top of the table clash. Leicester Southampton, it's all gonna kick off. I could either be crying or furiously masturbating by the end of this. I'd imagine I'll be probably furiously masturbating regardless, to be honest. Maybe with a little tear in my eye if we don't win. Anyway, I digress. So, I'm going to be discussing uh, Iggy Pop's new album, Post Pop Depression. Still with the price tag on, because I'm giving this as a present to somebody, but I have heard it, honest. Otherwise, why would I be talking about it? Um, yeah, so Iggy Pop, you know who Iggy Pop is. Iconic punk rock and roll icon. Friend of David Bowie and Lou Reed. A man with some serious credentials in the rock and roll world. And um, that is despite doing those car insurance adverts with the weird puppet, which I thought were pretty funny. So, you know, if you're going to get in his back for that, then you're an idiot. You know, if you use words like sell out, then grow up. You're not 15. Oh, sell out. No. Oh, he, he sold out. He, he, he's doing something to actually make money and carry on being alive. Oh, what? Have you got a job? Do you love your job all the time? Hmm? Oh, what? You don't? Okay, well, you've sold out. You've sold out, you have. Because you've compromised yourself, you fucking baby. Anyway, I digress again. So, Iggy Pop. Yeah, um, somebody who I'm probably had a, uh, I guess, a greatest hits kind of knowledge of. Um, you know, I don't profess to have a huge, um, expansive insight into Iggy Pop, because I don't. Uh, he's somebody that, you know, I know the Stooges, I know... The big Iggy Pop songs, you know, I know The Passenger and, you know, I'm Bored and, uh, you know, Charlie Girl and stuff like that. But, you know, there's, um, there's a whole layer of Iggy Pop I've yet to scratch. Consequently, I have been scratching as a result of listening to this new album. So, it's not even the kind of thing that I would normally uh, kind of pick up and listen to, really. Um, now... One one thing that's piqued a lot of people's interest and kind of made it a little bit more current and relevant is the people collaborating on this album. So you've got some guy from the Raconteurs, uh, Dean Fatita, Raconteurs, Dead Weather, sorry. One of the indie bands that I don't give a shit about. Uh, and then you've got uh, Matt Helders, who I think is in the Arctic Monkeys. Uh, and then Joshua Homme, of course, you remember from Queens of the Stone Age. So, you know, some kind of current... Musicians, really, people on the precipice of rock, and because of the the fact that it, I've not been interested in the work of many of these people, um, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, I've not really kind of gave a shit about for years and years and years and years. They're certainly more of an enemy band now than they are a uh, our world, our little world rock band. You know, they're more uh, in the cool crowd rather than this kind of nerdy heavy metal people, and. Um, yeah, I, I do like Arctic Monkeys, but um, you know it's not a, not a massive draw when I, somebody from the Arctic Monkeys is on an album. But uh, you know, I, I, I heard some really, really, really good things about it, and um, it made me want to kind of check it out. It, it piqued my interest a little bit, so I thought, you know what, I've got it up on Spotify. I'll give it a little pray. Well, the first track, "Break Into Your Heart," which I gave you a little rendition of there. Just pulled me in straight away. Uh, I um, it has almost like a, a Bowie quality to the vocals, which you kind of hear throughout. And um, going back to like a lot of his solo work, uh, like the Idiot and stuff, when he was knocking about with Bowie in Berlin, um, you, you can really see the influence he had on hip hop and encouraged him to use his low register. And somebody that I've not necessarily traditionally thought of as being a particularly good vocalist. Um, just pulls out just an absolutely stunning vocal performance. Um, he's not a technically good singer by any means, but he does something really interesting with his voice, and there's such character and feeling in what he does uh, that it's impossible to replicate. And you know, if that's not a great vocal performance, then what is? He's not going to be trilling all around the houses like you know, bloody Glenn Hughes or whatever, but. Just just a really um, brooding, intense, swaggering kind of 
quirky vocal performance. Uh, and th that's um, a big big plus of the album is is Biggie Pop's vocals, which is good because his name's on the title of the album. But also the songs are so cool and catchy and um, a little bit kind of funky. They've got a, uh, a cool indie rock feel about them without straying too far into the kind of trendy hipster world. Uh, there's, there's enough kind of balls on the guitars and uh, enough swing on the drums to keep it out of that um, that kind of New York, hey, too cool to move kind of territory, uh, which is good. And, you know, Josh Homme, somebody whose work I've not really appreciated for quite a long time. I don't want to be one of those cliche guys that says, oh, Queens of the Stone Age, they weren't, you know, they haven't done anything good since Songs for the Death, but... Mm. Yeah, they certainly haven't done anything great since Songs for the Deaf, is what I'd say. That's my two cents for what it's worth. Josh Homme, with your massively successful career and your um, marriage to Brody Dahl as well. Yeah, I'm sure you care what I think. But still, uh, yeah, he, his work on here is, is, is really kind of cool because it provides the perfect backdrop. You get a cool... His backing vocals are uh, for out here as well, that kind of high-end falsetto-y, velvety tone that he's got. Um, really complements Iggy Pop's kind of low, gravelly register here. And, yeah, songs like Gardenia, and they're, they're just really awesome singles. Uh, almost all of these songs on here could be, could be singles. And it's, um, it's not often you can say that about somebody in the twilight stages of their career. Um, like his friend David Bowie, he seems to be here just undergoing a, uh, a real late career revival and renaissance, uh, maybe inspired by his friend and, you know, the post-pop depression. It's almost a title that indicates, like, you know, somebody trying to take back their relevance again and not just be a heritage thing. And it's really something that uh, it continues for out really. So straight into like American Valhalla and in the lobby, um, these two tracks really again have got catchy choruses. They don't kind of pander too much. There's still an undertone of this kind of sinister rock and roll legitimacy. And again, the the, the bass lines on here as well. Um, you know, I've never been really a dead weather guy, but um, but there's some really kind of, you know, sinister, throbbing, sleazy bass lines. Some of it reminds me of, um, like, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's and, and, and stuff like that. Um, it's early, early Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's work where it's kind of a little bit uh, kind of dancey. But at the same time, it's this squalling, almost sonic youth kind of feedback on it. Uh, and then one of the real kind of highlights for me right in the middle, slight back in the middle, is the song Vulture which just goes a completely different route and sounds very much like a spaghetti western. Um, there's like a, a desert feel to which, which um, I'd probably attribute to Josh Homme, um, but could be wrong. And yeah, the, the desert feel to it, and it's it's got these kind of twanging, jangling guitars, and Iggy Pop just puts in a real powerhouse vocal performance, so the, the actual verses are so kind of, low slung and he's got just this fathom deep baritone that tells a story in a, in a way that only a few people can and this is an interesting thing about male vocalists with a uh, much lower register of uh, vocal range so in the same way that kind of Nick Cave and Tom Waits can tell a story and actually do more with a real limited uh, skill set of notes than than somebody with a far superior high register can. Um, he, he does that here and he's talking about, I guess, you know, the usual stuff, you know, people in suits and executives and predators uh, in a much more modern white collar sense. And uh, although it sounds like very cliched subject matter, you know, these, like the suits man, you know, the, um, the, the man's on the prowl again, you know, he's the enemy of rock and roll, but I think you kind of, you get a pass if you're Iggy Pop, and the the chorus on here is just really kind of powerful. Again, a little bit of a high-register Bowie tone to it, 
and right at the end he does some weird kind of like shamanic chanting and uh, yeah it just kind of the crescendo on it is just uh, a real kind of punch in the face after a real sinister build up and then German Days is um, as you might expect a hark back to his kind of days in Berlin really with with his mate David Bowie and Lou Reed knocking about those three together causing all kinds of trouble um, and that's where it kind of does a similar thing that Where Are We Now did on Bowie's Next Day album where he goes back and explores the past but there's, um, there's a hint of nostalgia but there's again enough of a modern edge and a uh, real sharp production to keep it uh, relevant and you know we close out with two absolute bangers in Chocolate Drops probably the best song on the album and Paraguay uh, again some real uh, just really just strong songwriting and it does something that a lot of things that I've liked recently uh, has done which is present a for all intents and purposes a pop song but give it that kind of raw human edge it's not produced within an inch of its life it very much sounds like a kind of a jam like a garage collaboration but there's just enough sheen to the production so there's clarity on the instruments you know it's really well recorded but there's a rawness to it there's a flawed execution to a lot of it and uh, you know it makes for a really really exciting listening experience so nine tracks as well it doesn't have stay it's welcome you're looking at a 40 minute in and out kind of album and I think not only is this a good album for somebody at this late stage in their career, it's just a really, really good album generally. It's something that really surprised me, encouraged me to go back and check out more of this artist's work to the point where you know, I'm really, really kind of getting deep into the Stooges and um, you know, Raw Power and The Idiot and, and all these kind of things. And it's just a real great, I wouldn't say icing on the cake because I hope this is just the start of more to come, but it's, it's the real brilliant kind of a landmark in an already decorated and fantastic career so yeah Iggy Pop post-pop depression you can hear a lot of the uh, the boring beige magazines and, and publications you know Q and Enemy kind of bigging it up um, but for once they're probably right this is a really really great album and it's much more accustomed in our world the rock and heavy metal world than it is in the, uh, the the cool indie world, which it's going to win a claim in as well. So it pretty much there's something here for everybody. So check it out, Iggy Pop post pop depression, and I'm going to come back very very soon with some more record reviews, and I'll catch you later. Hopefully three points better off at the top of that table. Bye.